Hello and welcome to Policy Watch, your one-stop shop for all the top business and economic news of the week. It's context, it's relevance and impact. I'm Govind Raj Ethiraj. The monsoons might have been slow in July, but it's been raining in the stock markets, all right, with a very strong showing in July. We find out why with market expert Ramesh Damani, member of Bombay Stock Exchange and Ajay Bagga, market expert. Also, it's halfway through the year and the economy is still sending mixed signals. What lies ahead for the next six months? We find out from Murthy Nagarajan, head of fixed income at Quantum Mutual Fund. Well, the monsoon might be going slow in the month of July, but it's been raining in the stock markets all right, with the Sensex hitting a three-month high this week. Fears of a Greece exit from the euro and a China market crash seem to have receded or been weathered. While the Sensex is now hovering around 28,540, there are still concerns on corporate earnings which are likely to be weak for the rest of the year. Where then are the markets headed and what are the key signals? Here's a report. 20 months of hectic negotiations, some nervous moments, provocations from Israel, but it's through at least this stage in the end. Iran and six global powers, including China, struck a deal putting brakes on Iran's nuclear program in exchange for lifting sanctions. As global markets celebrated the potential repercussions of the development, the US president termed it a move in the right direction. India welcomed the deal as it would open another reliable source of energy supplies. market will come a surplus. तो हमारी चेहरे पे तो खुशी आएगी आएगी तो आप लोगों को भी खुशी मिलेगी रेट और घटेगी प्राइसेस रीजनेबल हो जाएगी प्राइसेस रेस्पॉन्सिबल हो जाएगी येट अनदर पॉजिटिव डेवलपमेंट फॉर द ग्लोबल इकोनॉमी केम फ्रॉम यूरोप यूरोपियन फाइनेंस मिनिस्टर्स अग्रीड टू अ थर्ड बेल आउट फॉर ग्रीस ब्रेक्सिट फेयर्स रिसीड एट लास्ट विद ग्रीस अग्रीइंग टू इंप्लीमेंट स्ट्रिंजेंट ऑस्टेरिटी एंड रिफॉर्म मेजर्स इट्स नॉट टू द ग्रीक गवर्नमेंट एंड टू द ग्रीक टू द ग्रीक Parliament to rebuild trust, which is necessary to take the next decisions. The best news came from China, as the world's second largest economy posted 7% economic growth in the second quarter. Chinese stocks have suffered massive crashes last month, eroding up to 40% of the value of stocks that forced the government to impose curbs on trading. The bigger picture shows up a positive outlook ahead, at least seemingly. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha Television. Well, joining me now are Ramesh Tamani, member of Bombay Stock Exchange and Ajay Baga, market expert. Gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us. Ajay, let me begin with you. We've had a very interesting cumulative week or more. Uh, we've had the, uh, the combined uh, uh, impact of Greece, China and Iran for different reasons. Uh, Iran is good, Greece was a question mark and China was a bigger question mark till things seem to have stabilized. So what exactly happened? Yeah, I think a lot of uh, international volatility came uh, and uh, bore down on our markets and the very fact that we have done so well this week talks a lot about our markets, the resilience mm -hmm. and what really stands out that India is a very deep market. People are able to come in and uh, take out money mm. when they want to. That uh, engenders a lot of confidence mm. into the market. Overall, Iran is very positive for us uh, right from the Chabahar port mm. to the oil uh, you know, that will come in. There are 23 uh, mega tankers of Iran standing in the high seas with 40 million barrels. So our oil prices will come down plus the entire, I think Modi really saw it, uh, the PM really saw uh, it well that he was in Central Asia. So the entire trade route mm. to Central Asia through Iran which India has been trying, that opens so up. So you are looking more at the Iran upside rather than the, the Greece and China downside as I see. China downside I think uh, Govind was good for us mm. because uh, the amount of money that came out of China, I think we started seeing a positive inflow from oh. FIs and if you see the first day of the China Chinese uh, meltdown sometime mm. in mid-June, uh, mid uh, the Thai market or the Taiwanese market fell much less than our markets that day because people were able to take more money out of our market. So right. that reaffirms our position as among the top markets which uh, stay open even okay. when there is selling. Okay. Uh, Ramesh, let me ask you a question which is part hindsight and part foresight in some ways. So uh, when we take a step back, what does this tell us about Indian markets, number one, and, and I'm really it's a resilience question. And the second thing is where do we stand in terms of overall emerging market flows? Yeah, Govind, if you look at it uh, from, uh, we are in the middle of earnings season, so Q they will tend to be uh, in the thick of earnings season next week. So the buoyancy that we see in the market may be a little bit tempered. But the two things that stand out for me is why the Indian market is doing so well. One, of course, is the fact that a lot of domestic money, for the first time in 15 years, domestic money is pouring into the Indian stock market. By some measure, what we got in 15 years, we're getting in one year right now in terms of flows. 
So that is helping prop up the mid cap index, the larger cap indexes. The second, of course, is that we started a bull market 18 months ago. So any event that comes along the way, for example, Greece, Iran, any other crisis with Russia, acts merely as a correction. The market recovers from that pretty soon, which is what we saw today, a textbook example of those kind of things happening. So it seems to me that India is standing apart, yes, as Ajay pointed out, because of the fact that commodity prices will go down and money that is going to China will come back to India. But we are also seeing very strong domestic flows. In fact, the best in a generation perhaps. And also the fact that this bull market is now, you know, moving on its next leg perhaps. Are you saying therefore that this is more a domestic supply driven market move up rather than a fundamental driven up uh, movement? Well, bull markets don't begin in a vacuum. Obviously, there are some fundamentals. You know, we all believe that whether it will happen or not is now we will see this over time. But we all do seriously believe that a new bull market started in India two years ago. And as you are well aware, liquidity is the mother's bull, milk of a bull market. So this liquidity is now powering up the stocks. And it's giving us a big help. There have been no great IPOs in the market, no great corporate actions which have sucked out money from the public. So as long as the money flow continues to be this strong, I think corrections will be quite shallow uh, in time and in points. And in some ways, the retrospective question I was asking you was, does this also prove that we can substantially or, and significantly withstand similar international or external shocks in future as well? You know, the, if domestic flows come to India, if the Indian public suddenly has woken up and said, oh, gold is you know, not a great investment, real estate is too illiquid, and too high to get. So I'm going to get into equity because it's long term tax free. Dividends are tax free. You know, I mean, we get 20, 40 billion dollars a year in foreign flows. I mean, given the size of a two trillion dollar economy, we can easily make up that and more. So if the Indian public continues to vote with the checkbook as they have done for the past six months, I think this bull market has a long way to go in terms of time and in terms of price. Ajay, one of the concerns that analysts have been expressing is, of course, corporate earnings. Uh, in, and that seems to be not something that's going to get sorted out even in the coming year, but actually the year after, I mean, going by some of the predictions. Yes. What's your sense? Yeah, I think it will take some time, but there are green shoots. Mm -hmm. Definitely, uh, we are seeing, say, telecom is a turnaround story already happening. Uh, lower base, you're going to see 18 to 25 percent uh, growth year on year in telecom, for example. OMCs have done very well, the oil marketing companies. Uh, we have a global QE coming because of the fallen uh, commodity prices, what Ramesh Bhai was also mentioning. And same thing happens for India. India is getting a huge advantage mm. because of the lower commodity complex. Mm. That has not translated till now into better numbers. Mm. But I think this quarter onwards, you will see entire companies, uh, you will see in the paint companies, that's why market has run up with them. Mm. Where there is a problem still, PSU banks. It's mm. a big sector mm. and uh, we anticipate that problem to continue for quite a few quarters. Industrials, the recovery is still not uh, very strong. Mm. Cement, we had expected last year. In fact, uh, Mr. Gadkari uh, had repeatedly said there would be a huge road orders and infra takeoff. That has been a little disappointing, but cement I still think is a sweet spot. Lot of operating leverage there. So if you buy cement today and it takes off in the next three to six months, you'll get a, a lot of uh, advantage on the bottom line as okay. the order flows come in. So overall, I think it's a net positive situation. Definitely earnings are not recovering in a hurry. Uh, they're going to take their time. Uh, out of the four pillars, uh, Govind, if you see, mm. driving uh, the economy, one is exports. Exports are weak more because of global issues. Uh, that's true for Taiwan, it's true for Korea, it's true for China, it's true for us. So can't be helped. Second is public capex, uh, public uh, investment expenditure where government has front loaded this year. Third is private capex. That is the biggest worry if you ask me. Private industrial confidence when you talk to people in uh, private is not very good still. And especially SMEs are still so all, suffering. All of this is sounding like why the market should not be going up, isn't it? Uh, yeah, and I think it's a tempered market. Mm. You know, what uh, Rabish also mentioned earlier, uh, we have got uh, in June the highest ever flows, but for January 2008, which mm. was the previous peak of the market, we got about 13,000 crores into equity funds. Last month in June, we got 12,500 crores. So, mm. But that is tempered with a total lack of euphoria. Mm. Bull markets are really marked with a lot of euphoria, Which lot of optimism. For a long time. All of us are critical. Right. Right. So okay. it's not a bull market fully raging. It's okay. a nice 
uh, tentative bull market which is getting on its legs it's a multiple year bull market okay ramesh are you on board with that uh, tentative bull market no it's a bull market no not a tentative bull market it is a bull market go with uh, i agree with a lot of the analysis that ajay gave and when earnings come in that acts as a reality check but market tends to keep looking ahead and it's giving it more leeway than it would normally give may give another 6 months leeway before corporate earnings start to come up and only in the final stages of the bull market which whenever that happens that you'll see a lot of euphoria that you'll see you know the panwala giving you tips you will see uh, bad quality issues trading very highly large amount of ipos very easy gains lot of euphoria on the street none of which you're witnessing now is it's a nice steady working like workman like uh, bull market going on money is being made money is coming in expansion plans are being unveiled by the company so i think this is the typical stage where you should invest in great businesses and just stand back and watch your money compound over long periods of time is not a time to trade not a time to get in and out not a time to be cute but to find fundamentally good businesses and invest for the next bull market cycle which could be 3 5 years away so if we were to look ahead uh, ramesh uh, what do you feel is going to drag this market down or keep it suppressed and what is it going to what is going to actually keep it bubbling up well uh, i think if the money flow keeps going like this uh, it has to go into equities and you have to remember govind that uh, the ownership of indian equities Uh, prior to say 12 months back was the lowest it has been in india and you go to shareholder list it was family and friends basically living in south bombay and uh, delhi who owned all equity so the indian public is just coming into equities they're seeing gains for the first time they're seeing companies go up double triple pay you tax free dividends once they make money they tell their friends they tell their relatives they tell their brothers they tell their cousins they come into the market a good quality number of ipos are scheduled to come over the next 6 month so they will get bloodied out there so all this will help so the, the money flow having started if you start the tap you're not going to turn off the public is not going to turn off the tap so liquidity will keep it going what will damper the stock market i think clearly if you don't have earning 6 months down the road which i think will start coming that would be a problem if you think that uh, you know the kind of divisional communal sectoral politics that we have in india all the time where we do self goals uh you know if that kind of thing rises up yeah that would be a negative but broadly i am optimistic i think the, you know the market is on a fairly good footing and it's as good a time maybe it was a better time 2 years ago but even now it's a fairly good time to come in and invest in some high quality businesses right uh, what's what's uh, going to hold it back uh, you said you talked about bank stocks i mean that's a concern which is in some ways doesn't get confined to banks but it's a it's a sort of sector wide uh concern is it yeah quite a few sectors are in uh, trouble land there you know i i wish our policy makers learn a bit from china mm. just today they have capitalized one bank with 48 billion dollars mm. we have a budget which is talking of psu bank capitalization 6900 crores and then we choose to go to the us and announce that we will put 12000 crores more mm. look at the size of india economy so even if we are one fifth of china 10 trillion versus 2 trillion we need if we could capitalize our psu banks more create a bad bank us at the height of the crisis put in 700 billion dollars into their banks mm. we need bold moves like that mm. you know and you can raise the money a uh, uh, year before last we raised 48000 crores from tax free bonds last year the government just chose not to issue tax free bonds you can raise as much money as you want from the indian public raise that money put it into your banks let them really right. be running uh, the economy right okay ramesh so uh, prognosis for uh, in in coming months i mean are the markets going to sustain at this level if so what should people be uh, thinking about or should they be is, is sort of rushing in or uh, holding for, uh, holding uh, holding uh, sort of waiting at the holding point um Govin, I think uh, they're already doing a good job this year. I think uh, on television, many anchors have consistently mourned the lack of Indians in Indian equity. I think that the foreigners were more bullish on India than Indians were. I think that has changed, and that's a very major change for the Indian stock market. It means we are no longer dependent on foreign flows. I mean, when China collapsed, India barely fell 500 points, and that was also in sympathy. So the first time there's a qualitative change going on in the Indian market. that we are no longer so dependent like oxygen in the brain with foreign investment domestic money is coming in it's coming in droves you know that remains good i think this money is coming in as smart money it will tend to make money if it invests in good high quality businesses 
and holds them for a period of time. Uh, I don't think it's still hot money coming to the market. In fact, if the market pushes a bit higher, foreign money will also start coming into India. So I think, you know, it looks like any correction in India will not be for too long a duration and be fairly shallow. So it's a good time to go out and shop for some high quality businesses going. Right. Uh, last word, Ajay, prognosis? I think uh, it's going to be a good, very strong multiple year uh, performance by the markets. Uh, overall, uh, there is a good momentum to the economy. We are not seeing the results that fast. It will take a little bit of time. But uh, I wish uh, the RBI was a little more uh, accommodative. That's one wish uh, I have. Uh, that would really uh, lead this uh, economy higher. Just adding to what Ramesh Bhai said, mm. I think one a factor that really works for us is a stable rupee. Mm. With the kind of arsenal uh, backing us and holding the rupee stable, that will lead to more flows coming in. Second is your reduced current account deficit. Because the oil price is going down and because of the love affair with gold going off, that those are very two mega trends. Mm. And if uh, so are, you are you sure that the love affair for gold is over? At least the last That's three the months feeling. looks okay. and you know when the investment class does not perform then you see that it starts, okay. you know, uh, people, uh, at least the incremental money. Yes. Okay. Right. We need to take a break on this, but we're going to come back and talk about the economy. It's almost, it's six months plus. Let's try and understand what's happened in the last six months and more importantly, what could happen in the next six months for the Indian economy. Stay with us. Welcome back to Policy Watch. Mixed signals are being thrown out by the Indian economy, which makes it a good point to do a mid-year check on the indicators that have delivered and those that have not. The index of industrial production numbers are weak, down to 2.7% for May versus 4.1% in April. Consumer inflation is favorable, down to 5.4% in June. Now, the good news is that India seems to have largely insulated itself from the Greek crisis and the China market's crash. The question, of course, is halfway during the year, where, what is or where is the economy going? Welcome back. I'm joined by Ramesh Damani, member of Bombay Stock Exchange, Ajay Bagga, market expert, and Murthy Nagarajan, head of fixed income at Quantum AMC. Gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us. So what we're trying to understand is what's, what's been working on the, on the economy when it comes to the key indicators and what could potentially change and improve, if at all, in the next six months. So, uh, Murthy, let me begin with you. You know, so we've had a mixed bag, right? So we've, uh, if you look at the recent set of numbers, we've seen IIP numbers go down. Uh, we've seen inflation, of course, improve, but export numbers down again, and everyone's clamoring for an interest rate cut. Right? What does this all add up to? Look, the point of people clamoring for interest rate cut is slightly muted right now after the inflation number of 5.4, which has come. Uh, what we have to understand is that you have got two more base effect, mm -hmm. which will which will be beneficial for the market. Maybe the next inflation may come around four, four and a half. Mm -hmm. But afterwards, the last year's base effect actually comes on. This number which we have got is 121, then from there it goes on coming 190 now because last year it was actually deflating right. our economy. The IIB data, so the WPI data as well as the CPI data was actually deflating. So we will see this number actually, you will see RBA achieving the 6% target looks difficult. Mm -hmm. So given that situation, expectation of rate cuts looks very real, real unrealistic right now okay. after this. Uh, as far as exports are concerned, given that China is slowing down, US is slowing down, definitely there is going to be an impact of that. So, given that situation, you have to look at more at domestic demand which, which is happening. And because of the only bright indicator is that the stall projects which were stayed, that is showing an uptick. So, the, even though right. new projects are not coming, the stall projects are getting cleared. But of course, there would be issues of funding that. But these are the indi slight indications where there is, seems to be some amount of turnover in the, right. in the story. Right. Ramesh, uh, you know, we were talking about the markets and we've taken away a lot of optimistic notes from there. But how's the economy, uh, the underlying economy looking to you, particularly if you were to look at the next six months? You know, I'm not a big picture uh, person who does a lot of analysis. What I realize is that, for example, the deregulation that has taken place in the oil and petroleum sector is helping these companies for the first time. And this is counterintuitive because you see uh, oil prices are going down and despite that, they will come up with record profits, I believe. So, you know, I think some of it is uh, counterintuitive. On the ground, the numbers haven't come, I agree with you. But, you know, market tends to look well, maybe sometimes 12 months ahead, sometimes 18 months ahead. And as long as liquidity gushes through, I don't think market is going to... Um, what it's looking at, all the inflation is coming the, down the right way. Interest rates are headed down is the right way. Oil prices are headed down the right way. So, I think the market is, you know, fairly sanguine about all these things.
Okay, so uh, Ajay, wh what's your sense? I mean, you know, well, let's let's park interest rates aside for a moment. But otherwise, if you were to look at the performance of the economy as a whole and its ability to perform and the underlying assets, which include companies, are things on a strong wicket? I know they're on an even wicket, but are they on a yeah. strong wicket? I think economy, uh, as far as the government's management of the economy, it's on a strong wicket. So they have uh, contained the fiscal deficit. Good thing is going from $110 to 60 when the oil price fell. 66% of that uh, fall was absorbed by the government in excise duty hikes. So they have a lot of cushion built in and that's what's causing you 37% year on year growth in your indirect taxes. That's the huge uh, number which is coming in. So instead of passing on and having people guzzle more and more oil, they have kept the oil price high. Only 33% is passed on to the consumer, 66% government has absorbed. Mm. Third is the current account deficit coming down is uh, very, uh, very much uh, positive. Uh, because if you see now uh, between the uh, remittances and the uh, software uh, services, we have a break even. Mm. Uh, 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 we'll have a current account deficit uh, of uh, roughly uh, or, or rather a trade deficit of roughly about 120, 130 billion dollars and uh, invisibles themselves will be about 150. So uh, leave aside FDI, FII coming in, that's why I'm bullish on the rupee. Okay. I don't think even with a dollar uh, hike in rates uh, by the Fed, uh, we have a lot of uh, right. leeway okay. on the rupee. So let's ask the monsoon question because we cannot go without that. Uh, let me begin with you, Muthi. So uh, we've obviously had a weaker July and a very strong June and much more than expected. Uh, which way could it go? I mean, I'm not asking you to break the monsoon as much as what could happen if it were to obviously come back in force and if not? Look, monsoon is the one indication which people are looking out for. But uh, the government last year also remember that we had a deficit monsoon. The we had the go this this government is able to manage monsoon deficit much better than the previous government. Right. So which so is that's a big. you're saying the overall impact of monsoons have uh, diminished as far as to GDP some extent. Concerned. Yes. Yeah. The other point is that uh, the northwest has got plentiful monsoon, so that is a good thing for that is a weed ball of the country. So that will actually help. So, and we have got sufficient food stock as far as cereals are concerned. The, the problem which is coming is on oil side, where we are going palm oil and all these prices are going up and pulses. So that I think the government has already started the process of importing and they also started taking against holding of things. So I think we should see it slightly slowing down. Other thing which is important is that today the pulses, uh, the acreage of pulses which has been covered in this monsoon is 44 percent higher than what it was last year. Mm -hmm. The, so the people are taking signs from the price signals which they are getting. There is a 35 to 40 percent rise in pulses prices. So farmers are sowing more of pulses. So this time if the monsoon is good then we will have uh, pr pulses breaking even and then we should not see further pulses rise. Plus the government is taking action to import. So they, we do not think we uh, on the because of monsoon we will see inflation going high. So, but what the point is that since there has already been an effect and we have also taken stiff targets of taking keeping CPI inflation at 6 percent levels, there has also been price increase on fish, meat, then there has been closing increase, there have been so housing has not increased. But given this type of situation, there is some amount of pressure So, and then with the Fed hiking rates. So, these are all uncertainties which are there. So, those are more important than the monsoons right now. Okay, fair enough. So, uh, the other thing is there is a very interesting divergence between wholesale price inflation and consumer yeah. price inflation. So, what, what does that tell us? I mean, you know, explain it for us. Yeah, you know, WPI has been uh, in a deflation territory for 8 months and somehow we do not talk about it at all in the public uh, forum. But it, it is a very telling indication that nothing is right on your industrial uh, front. So, if you see your manufactured goods, you see your intermediate goods, capital goods, uh, both uh, in terms of consumption and production you are having an issue. Pricing power is not there. So, the bigger issue with this uh, WPI is, one is it is a function of commodities globally having gone down. So, uh, you uh, seems like it has got passed on as well within the economy. Second is the pricing power has not come down because aggregate demand has been hurt. So the bigger issue which comes out of this uh, divergence is that your industry is running at 70 percent capacity. 
you have 30 percent unutilized capacity. Now there, uh, what you can make money as a market man is, you, this is what is called operating leverage. If say cement plants start kicking in, they are working 65, 70 percent capacity. You can have a big uh, uptick. Steel is not going to recover fast because uh, China is uh, producing 10 times India, they can ship in any amount you want. So you need more product, uh, protection on steel and you need huge and infrastructure. We already got that protection. Tariffs have been Two raised. and a half percent go in, but mm. the difference is nearly 20 percent. Okay. The landed cost, I speak to so many uh, consumers of steel, uh, they are getting it at nearly 200 dollar cheaper, okay. even after the two and a half percent and uh, Maharashtra government also puts a five percent cess. Right. Even after that, they are about 200 dollars cheaper. Okay. Uh, Ramesh, let me get a quick uh, view from you. You know, when you look at around the world, I mean, what's the sense you get today in terms of uh, where people are putting their money, in terms of which, what kind of markets uh, and, 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 and then walk us through what you feel uh, this could be or how this could go in the next six months. Uh, Govind, of course, the first market we should look at is the U.S. market. And while it has been a very maturing bull market, it doesn't show signs that I would typically like to see at the end of a bull market. So I think the easy liquidity that is there, corporate earnings are getting better there. So the market is still rolling quite well along. <clears throat> you move to the second biggest market, which is uh, the, China, the Japanese market. And again, Abenomics has now taken off. And the determination to get back to 2% inflation is fueling uh, Japanese stock rally. Uh, the European markets have recovered very smartly after um, the Greek crisis. China is a problem. I think uh, typically when you see a bubble, uh, the market tend to retrace the entire amount of the bubble. And I think that's what happened in China. We had a very short policy-led bubble that took place in China, uh, supported by the central government. And I think uh, they are now realizing that it's not easy to control the beast called the stock market, something that we realized say in 90 and 2000 during our bubbles in the stock market. So I think China remains a sh sure spot. All these tips countries that remain at the edge, Portugal, Ireland, you know, they are trying to recover their uh, economic mojo if you will. So they remain problematic area. But I think globally the major markets that we look at, Dow Jones, Japan, India, look fine to me. Okay, that, that's, a, that's a good note to come back to uh, India, uh, Ajay and uh, Muti. So wh what's it going to be, I mean, wh what are the things that are going to determine how, you know, sentiment shapes up and how real demand shapes up? So sentiment is going to be driven by a lot of other things, maybe including how things move in parliament and demand is going to be driven on the consumer's perception of how rosy the future is. Yeah. Muti, do you want to ask? Look, the point is that there has been a disconnect between the, what the earnings have been and where the markets are. There are a lot of stocks which are expensive, but at the same time there are some stocks which are beaten down. So I think there are some stocks which are coming in valuation zone. So those are the I mean, some of the things in the automobile sector you are signing that there is some valuation benefit which people can get. So, so but we think we we still as a fund house think that the valuations are much ahead of it. It's already discounting two years, three years of earnings compared with where the market should be. So there could be some amount of pain. But from these levels, I think uh, around 1,000, 1, 1,200 points down, I think this is a good level to buy for investors who enter into this market. Uh, gentlemen, we run out of time. Uh, thank you so much, Ramesh Tamani, uh, Muti Nagarajan and Ajay Bagga. We'll be back next week on Policy Watch, same time. Thanks for watching.